I want you to go ahead and put the, the crown on of light. And if you want to keep your eyes closed, that's fine. Sending the light out and actually visualizing us together as light, weaving us around. So we're in a cohesive light. Okay. And then I'm going to breathe in and out and send my light connecting us. And then I'll let Debbie do her light language. So everyone breathe in the light through the top of your head. Send it out amongst us all, connecting it. Breathing light in the top of your head. Sending out to connect. Breathing light into the top of your head last time. Breathing out, doing light connection. Debbie. <laughs> No, ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
and your imagination with the creator energy source. Go to a sacred place. Allow it to open up in front of you. See the sacred place? Allow yourself, your energy, to go to that sacred place. Whereas the mountains, the sand, the beach, another dimension, another planet. Everyone nod when you have arrived at your sacred place. Breathe in the air of the sacred place and allow your energy to go down and anchor to the sacred place. Your energy, your higher self, your God source sends a large white luminous globe coming down from the sky. It may be a shape a globe, a saucer, round, but you see it descend from the light of the sky. And as it descends, the light changes within it. You begin to see symbols, letters, codes. Part of yourself, your ancient self, recognizes these. Allow yourself to imagine and visualize the codes, the letters, the symbols within this light. And the large globe with the letters, the codes, and the symbols glowingly overs above your head, still flashing light, lights, codes, numbers that are resonating with you. The bottom of the ship opens up and the light of the codes and the numbers cascades down upon you. Allow your spirit, your essence, your core to float up into the ship in the mist of the light and the numbers and the codes. Acclimate yourself, feel the codes, the numbers, feel and be aware of the vibrational energy of the light around you, the codes, the letters. Some are moving slow, some are moving quickly, some are spinning, some are coming to you very gently. It's a room full of your remembered ancestral codes that are your higher self that unlock your core, your higher spark of God that is your higher intelligence. Allow your right hand to unfold into the air, seeing the codes, the numbers, move around your hand. One will light upon your hand. It is your choice at this time to either let the symbol stay on your hand or place it down on your wrist so that your code will accentuate and strengthen the energy that comes out of your right hand. It is your choice to hold on to it or use it as a tool on your wrist to accentuate and strengthen your own signal and your own healing. And everyone nod when they've done that, when you've made your choice. Open up your left hand and allow the codes to cover and dance around your left hand. Let one gently land, acknowledge it, and decide if you want to use it on your hand or use it as a bracelet to accentuate and strengthen your intuition, your coming in of signals, your awareness, your intuitiveness. So you have one symbol on your left hand that strengthens and intuits all information coming in on your left hand. And on your right hand, you have the symbol on your hand or on your wrist that accentuates your healing, that accentuates your signals you're sending out. So with your both hands open, be aware and tune in to the symbols that are around you. The love and acceptance that you feel from this light, the love and support and the welcoming 
that these symbols and lights are giving you as they surround you. And the top of the ship opens. And all the symbols and all the codes and all the letterings go out the light. They just flow out like a stream. And you know intuitively they are going back to your home, your tribe, your space, your vibrational energy, and you float in the stream of the codes, the numbers and the letters, your light merging with their light, your code accepting and merging with their code, strengthening, lightening, as you just glide down the slide of light. And you can feel the presence of your tribe in this life. You can feel the calling of your prize, your tribe, your life, your love, your frequency. It's calling to you. And you connect with that. And as soon as you connect with that life, that vibration, that tribe, that energy source, that is where you come from, you get pulled straight to that place. You allow your feet to feel the vibration, to feel the welcoming home of this place. Allow your feet to open. Feel the energy, feel the, the love, feel the support, and feel the nurturing of this planet, of this space. Get pulled up into your feet. Be aware of the space, the light, the colorings, the way your, your space feels. Allow your head your ears, your face, your hands to absorb the love, the welcoming, the unconditional love that you feel in this place. The planet itself says welcome home. Nod when you can feel yourself connect to this planet and this place that welcomes you. Now there's a mist for me off to your right and it gets denser and denser and you can feel from this mist that there's a wise person in there someone that you haven't seen you haven't been in the presence of for eons and your heart speaks for beat and your start hearts to open and your whole body feels like it's like pulsing with light as this magical being this ancestral being emerges from the mist, holds the hands out and welcoming. And you can feel there's no verbal words. It's touching your heart. It's touching your head. Welcome home. You have been gone for so long. And you have always been in our heart. Welcome home. We have missed you. And the being walks out, hands open, and says, how can I help you? Now that you have found your way here, you can always come back to the lights and codes and symbols that you have accumulated on the journey. Take my hand and tell me what I can do, how I can help you, how I can assist you. What do you need from me? Allow yourself to put palm on palm and mentally into your heart. Tell this magical being, this being that loves you with all of its heart, what you need, what you want, what you need going forward. Take a moment and just connect and non-verbally through your heart, talk and tell them what you want. Feel where your hands are joined, where your palms are joined. Feel a light, small at first, 
You feel it growing into a small ball of light between your hand and your spirit guide's hand, your shaman's hand. Physically feel the warm light between your hands. Solid ball of light. He tells you in your heart to take this and whenever you need to speak or you need to be in the presence, you are to take your hands together. He is gifting you this from his planet. Put your own two hands together and allow the ball to grow. And he says, this ball is from your tribe. This ball is from your planet. This ball represents your home energy. Allow the ball to grow and allow your energy to interact, your thoughts to interact, your needs to interact. You will be directly connected to us through this ball, this light ball, this energetic frequency that we are giving you at this time. And everyone nod if they can feel the ball between their hands and your guide's hands. Now remove your hands from the guide hands and put your hands together with the ball of light between your own hands so that you can feel the energy of the light. So when you leave, you will know what it feels like. You will know the vibration. You will know how to connect. So he wants you, he wants you to have that before you leave. And he wants you to have that connection solidified. He wants it to be closed within your vibrational frequency before you leave. So everyone nod once you feel that your hands close and that vibra vibrational frequency of light in your hands. Okay. Now his last instruction of you is to put the code that you see, that you sense, that you feel, that he has given you, that only you know of, in that ball of light. There's a special code that is an activation code for you. That is only for you. And when you look between your hands or sense between your hands, you can feel that code vibrating, pulsing. It is alive with the vibration of your planet. It is a secret activation code. And everyone nod if you can feel and see the code pulsing in your hand. Now as a last exercise, your shaman, your wise man, wants you to change the coloring of the coating in your ball so that you know that you can change and alter the vibrational frequency. So everyone change the color of the code or the symbol in their hand and visually see the code change. And everyone now when you've seen the code change colors. And the wise man, the shaman, the ancient one, says, you are ready to go back. You can come here at any time. And he puts his two hands together, two part of his hands together. And he touches where your third eye is. And he says, blessings and love will follow you always. You are loved. You are supported. We are so proud of what you are doing and we will never leave you. We are always a part of you. And he takes his hand away and says, you are always part of our beloved tribe and we will always love you. And he puts a gold globe around you to support and protect you from any negative energies going back on your planet going back to the 3d he says i am giving you a gift of shielding i am giving you a gift of protection from our planet as your lifetimes on that earth it is born thin. i am reinforcing i am giving you a globe of protection to protect you to strengthen you because you have have had many hard lives and it has weakened 
So that is there. That is our gift of this planet to you. And all the lights and the codes and the numbers and the light surrounds you and gently pulls you back toward the stream, toward the globe of light. And for a bit, you can still feel the connection with the planet, the love of your tribe, the connection to your source. And as you travel away, it gets lighter, but then you remember the, that light in your hands and you close your hands and reconnect with the light as you go in the stream and go back to the ship of light that has the symbols and the numbers and the coding. And as you acclimate to the light, the coatings, the ship and the light says, decompress. You've gone on a journey. Take a second to let your vibration, your frequency adjust itself because you're going to be going back down to 3D and where you were, you were your essence, you were your light, you were your strength. But you have been given gifts and support and blessings. So take a deep breath in of the light and the codes and the numbers in the ship. Breathe out and let yourself gently, softly land back on earth in your sacred 3D spot. Take a moment. Think of the codes that you have, the letters and symbols around you, the connection you had on the planet. Take just a moment to remember, assimilate, and let everything become part of your 3D experience. Because where you were was not 3D. And you need to pull in all the information, all the feelings, and all the frequencies that you had when you were not 3D. So take a time and just bring all the experiences into your heart, all the experiences into your brain. Let them become more of who you are. And then when you're ready, gently move your fingers, your toes. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. Did everyone experience what they thought it would be like? It was beautiful. What did you experience? Tell me what you felt, what, what your symbols were, where you went. Well. When I when the globe came down in the light, then I seen all of these like say like it was a bunch of like different symbols like say the biggest thing that stood out to me which is on my left hand was the star David, and on the right hand was a uh, number nine, and where I went I went in of course into my first my sacred place is normally. I go to the throne room with father. So that's normally my sacred place. So I went to the sacred place and then of course the light came down very fast, almost like a like a loop, like a U. Cause it was like, you're here, <laughs> like kind of thing. So then, so then, then through the globe, when it, um, when like say through the mist, when the mist opened, it was Yeshua standing there. And of course, Smiling, he was like, "Yep," <laughs> like, "Cause I, I mean, reached the hands out, and then of course, touching the palms. I work with a lot of like, say the that spirit energy because the the golden light, because I call myself a golden light healer. So in that little ore part, so that's what we made in our hands, and um, that's what basically flowed through, and I felt the orb come around me as well, and that shield of protection." Thank you for that, because I really I know I needed that, you know, and it was beautiful. It was really beautiful. It was like um, I felt recharged in my spirit from that golden light because I, I missed that golden light. So I'm always pulling from that from that golden light or trying to get to that light. 
the so best. The main thing they wanted to tell me is for you to know that going forward, that is part of who you are. That is part of your. That is part of your toolkit. He say, that mm -hmm. is part of an addition to your toolkit. So besides where you are now, you're to use more of that going forward, and you can actually pull in energy now that you have the globe in your hand you have a direct connection to your planet to Joshua uh, in a different way so that you can use that with the globe in your hand with the healings you can actually activate the globe in your hands which is ironic that you call yourself the golden light and you can actually use that Jasmine what you get mm -hmm. I uh, experienced a planet that was had purple sand purple sand and then pink skies and the symbols I received one looked like a uh, like a rattle so it was uh, like like a u-shape almost like a cistrine rattle and then a um, looked like an equal sign with a slash through it it was very interesting and um, our, our orb initially had like a, a white crystalline quality, but then it, it turned blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I felt the, the light and the energy and it felt very good in my heart space. Very open. It was beautiful. <laughs> Philip, what'd you feel? Um. First of all, I went to the Druid Circle at Old Bree Edge, which I go a lot. But as soon as I got there, I went to a, it, it like transferred me into a, a dromedar, like the altar. Like, it's like a cliff edge there where the priestess does stuff. But as soon as I got there, I then transferred to somewhere else, which was it was like a domino effect. So I went to a planet I've never been to before, and uh, the mist was there. The being that came out, I've never seen anything like it. Had like like uh, things coming out of its eye, uh, head which we could connect to me uh, the symbol was the what, what, what they basically said was it's a constellation, constellation that I was at so it's a, the symbol of the planet's inner formation that was given into me and on the left side I was uh, there, there was like a bracelet but just tightened up and I've actually got markings on the arm <laughs> as well. I've got a bracelet on there, which is because I never wear anything. So it says, well, I'm wearing a watch, but I've worn a watch, took it off. And I've actually got the markings of it, but I never wear watches. So that was quite strange. Uh, the actual ball of, it was like a crystal ball of light, but inside was like energies that change into like, uh, oranges and yellows, different. So the symbols were energies inside the bowl, which was quite, quite, quite strange. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, the being was there. I've never seen a, a being like that before. So, uh, so I basically jumped from one end to another to another. So it's as well as going into me past, into me really ancient stuff. So uh, I think that's it. And then I came back. <laughs> yeah. So the spaceship was very strange. Yeah, as well. hmm? yeah my spaceship was very odd. What'd you see, Debbie? Hmm? Um, I, Deb, what'd you see? Well, my sacred place is a it's like a a pool with um, dolphin and whales, and uh, the my spaceship was kind of like a big teardrop, pearl, pearlescent teardrop. And my symbols was the infinity. And I don't know what this other symbol was. I didn't understand it. Um, but the being, my being was uh, a unicorn. Ooh. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, which surprised me. Uh, but it was very loving uniform, really beautiful unicorn. Um, but it did so when, when you kept saying hands it, it was hoof <laughs> <laughs> or it could have used his horn though too you could have used yeah. the horn and um that it was yes it was a very beautiful very very loving uniform I, 
heart to heart. Um, I don't know where, what planet, where we were. I have no idea. But it was a very beautiful. And I, the symbols, some of the symbols I don't recognize. I, they were very strange ones. One might look like a, a musical note, um, but the rest of them, no idea what they were. Well, I think that's I part of the purpose. Yeah. Is that it comes from your home or your home frequency. Yeah. So the some of them will look different or feel different because they're from not this dimension. Yeah. 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 I mean, the one I was the number eight. Um, I don't know why the other ones were, I have no idea. Idea. Um, and, but I asked, I I asked for specific things to help me in what we're doing on planet Earth and, and weaknesses I felt I had in myself, um, like especially with the energies going on now. I felt I, like I, I I need more patience. I feel like I'm. Lately, I, I don't have a lot of patience lately. I feel like I need to have, um, uh, I'm, I'm getting frustrated uh, with certain things. And I need, uh, I don't know, and I, I, I don't have a lot of energy. So I'm asking, I'm, I'm ask, I, was, I was saying a lot of things to the unicorn. Can you help me with certain things? But if I feel like I need, I need certain. I need certain help with, with uh, maybe. I do, am I judging people? And I, I, I need help with judgment. I don't. I want to be less judgmental. You know. I feel like I'm being. Um, can you help me make sure I, my ego stays out? Of, you know, in the background. I, I never want to be an ego. Have any ego in this? Um, as far as healing, make sure I, I never. I, I've always asked for that. You know, that my ego stays out of this. Because um, this is a gift, I want to be happy, uh, so grateful uh, for this gift. Um, so I always ask for that, um, and so these are things that are really important to me in, in what we're doing for humanity. Uh, and then we have um, Rick. Rick has a real issue with he, he can't visualize. So when he closes his eyes, he has no um, he has no way of doing this. He, so he, closes his eyes, he sees healing energy or he sees lights, and, but he has no visualization. Well, that's good. That, I mean, healing light and, and there's nothing wrong with seeing that, incorporating that into your journey. I mean, that's yeah. still a valid dimension and that's still a valid frequency. Yeah. That's so, just the dimensionality he sees, that Rick he lives in. Sees things, right. But he, you know, he could, because he can physically see angels and 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 uh, his fairies and everything he, he, he can't visualize like we can you know, right. I was seeing, well, they're just seeing green healing energy just moving about i saw some eyes occasionally eyes will pop out and leave um, but it just it was all green just constantly through the whole thing and i was i was a little frustrated i think at one point because i wasn't feeling like everybody else was feeling. Okay, so what they're telling me, Rick, I gotta wait for them to clarify, give me a second. Is because you're sensing a different frequency and uh, because your visualization is not that you don't visualize, but you visualize differently. So you do visualize, it's just different than A, B, and C. You're W, X, Y, and Z. So you don't visualize the same as everybody else. You visualize your frequency, your dimension. So, okay, I'm just going to say it. I hate it when they tell me stuff I don't understand. So, Rick, what they're telling me to pass on to you is for, for you to, to take your two fingers like this and just at points whenever you want to you have a different sensory perception so these are like 3d tools and anyone can do this actually anyone can do this these are 3d tools you close your eyes and this is a third eye and these are your earth eyes and you don't press hard 
but they said when you close the earth eyes and look through your third eye and I am seeing circles and shapes and all sorts of colors and I'm not pressing hard I'm just closing my earth eye and looking through my third eye and whatever presents itself in my third eye is what I am meant to see and they're saying that would apply for you you don't see the same vibrational frequency but they're saying use your three-dimensional fingers close your three-dimensional eyes and whatever comes to you through your third eye is your journey and your journey will not be the same as everyone else's but to go ahead and immerse yourself in whatever is shown through your third eye does that make sense to you so you will not have the same journey as everybody else so that's a given because your experience in your vibration is different you know and it's just use what you know where it takes you maybe different colors that may be different sensations but it's like you know we are different than just the normal people that go to work come home and complain about the news you know we're aware of a different vibrational frequency so we're different than a lot of normal people so Rick you're different in your spiritual scene and third eye than some of the spiritual people now I've run into other spiritual people that only see color and only see frequencies but that's your vibration yet you, your planet could be one of, of notes and and signs and frequencies and colors you cannot have a physical planet you can have a dimensionality of color frequencies just like dragons see our world completely different than we see or fairies see our world different than we do you have a big different visualization does that make sense just use what you have and you're gonna you're always gonna have a different experience than somebody else but what they want you to do is 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 uh, go in tune it up and accept that you have your yourself a diff, different dimensional frequency it's not bad it's not good you know okay I don't know what this coming they said Ashtar does not see us the way we see ourselves you know there are many beings that don't see us and see our world the way we see it. You are gifted and blessed to see a different reality. So it's a gift. That's what they're saying. So wait a minute. So does anybody have any questions? Now that I don't know who's standing next to me. Hold on. There's a group around me. So does anybody have any questions why the group is here? I actually have a group around me. Well, Carol, I've got what? Oh, go ahead. You're, no, no, go ahead. Too. Is it me or you? Yeah, you. You go ahead. I, I'll just one thing I forgot to mention. When I uh, saw the crystal ball with the different energies, I was at, I actually asked, "What do I do with this crystal ball?" And what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to plant it, but I'll know what to do in the earth. And it's like the blueprint of Earth to create higher vibration into Earth. So I just wanted to mention that. So, Carol, have you got anything for that? I keep seeing this beam, so I'm going to go ahead and just tell you what I see. So, there is a being that has a crystal body, like what you have. However, it has branches, it has tentacles, it has roots, it has an extensive system that comes from that energy ball. So when you psychically, I'm just repeating what they say, when you psychically play this in, in the ground, what's going to happen is the tentacles, the roots, the branches are actually going to intertwine with the earth's energy system and it's like it's like it's like i can't even tell you how many the tentacles it has but it has to be energy energetically implanted and it has its own root tentacle can you see it i mean i can literally see this crystal ball but it's got tentacles coming out of it 
And so when you energetically place in there, you don't have to worry about it. It's done. It's done. It goes off on its own. And part when you're saying that, I'm like, yes, it does. It is there to energetically through the root signals, through the branches, through the tentacles. Spread is vibrational energy. Spread is frequency to the earth. And what I'm hearing is it's going to help the earth kick butt. Because the earth is really mild and loving and accepting and not judgmental. And this energy ball is like, oh no, oh no, mm -mm. no, no, no. So it's, it's got an attitude. The crystal ball has an attitude. So when you put it in the earth, it inter interacts with its tribe. And I guess what they're telling me is Mother Earth guy has her own tribe, has her own soul group. She actually is an entity that is an expansive in a group. And this is like a gift from her soul group to remind her that she doesn't have to, bad pun, she doesn't have to be walked on all the time. That's a really bad pun. I'm sorry, but that's what they said. <laughs> I agree. So that. <laughs> that's why you were given, that's why you were given that is that's from her tribe to kind of put that back in her. That's a gift for her. And yes, it will help, but will help worth the sun because they have a really bad sense of humor. It's like the, the rivers of consciousness will bring up the fog of creation. And I'm like, will you quit doing this? They're like, they're very, they're like into these images of earth and, and expansion and 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 it's and it's it's it will help mother earth it will do nothing but help her but it's to be energetically planted okay what was the other question well i was i keep having a vision that um all of these like lights it's kind of like i'm flying over and all of these lights it's dark but all of these lights are kind of like in a line and they're all over so but when they go into like this place, the light brightens and then it goes out and extends the other light. So it's kind of like raising like mass consciousness is what I keep thinking. But can you ask them what that is? Oh. OK, well, I have to tell them what you said. Um. Okay, um, every life you have been here, you have given, um, and when you are there, you have, they're saying it's like Johnny Appleseed, only it's seeds of light. You come here and you give a seed of light, and you give a part of yourself. So those lights that you see, are all those times that you've been here and have given to yourself, all those different lives that you've been, and you tried to help and you've tried to teach. All those lights are parts of your light that you have given wow. on a non-linear place. So linearly, yes, you did place them. You place them yourself with your life, with your giving, with your actions. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. say one life, I'm seeing your teacher, and you traveled and you, you like gave consistently and you and you healed people, but you traveled. Mm -hmm. And so as you traveled to different towns and healed and helped and 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 opened their eyes and opened their hearts, there was a little light left. You went to a different town and you did the same work and a light was left. And mm -hmm. they're saying this is not just a physical light okay they are saying it is a soul spark so I'm going to stay with that it is a spark of your soul so we are a beam of God we are a light of God but in our light of God we can give we, when we give when we share we give the spark of God when we help somebody we give the light of God and mm -hmm. Jesus says as he walked he would share his light so what there's Thing is those lights that you feel it, that you can sense that you can and there's so many of them and they light up right. that is actually 
not uh, they're saying that's not only part of yourself they're saying expand what you see of yourself see of yourself as a heavenly constellation made up of thousands of stars okay you're not just like a five or six star constellation you're a thousand star constellation and all those points of light make up the spiritual being that you are so you are seeing your manifested sparks of god when you see that and they said it's it's not an ego thing it's what you have given and when they light up it's saying yes we are still working we are still activating we are when you give it doesn't stop it's like when you pass on that love stays valid that love is still there it's like the love between you and christ it's still there it doesn't matter that he's not physically on the earth that light that love is tangible so those lights that are sparks of god they keep saying sparks of god they are your sparks of god that you have placed and that is what you are seeing wow because it was so many i thought it was like judgment day or something i mean i didn't know what that was <laughs> you know? it is what you have given through your lifetimes it is the spark and it's like if they said most people don't see the light that they have given but you were able to see what you have put out there and they're saying if anybody before you go to bed want to say please let me see my god sparks please let me see my light sparks they will come to you because it's part of who you are it's part of what you have given so we have mm -hmm. all done light sparks but that's that's <laughs> what they're saying that is what that is for you it is that is your spark of god your spark of love Wow, thank you. So I mean, I've I've had that vision so much, and I I just thought that maybe it's, I'm just seeing all the souls are going back to God. Like that's what I thought yep. I was. Yeah. That's all. That's all part of your life. That's all part of what you've given. That's acts of light. Wow. And just think, every time you continue in this life, every time you give, you heal, you teach, you put another spark of light out there. That's what they're saying. Wow. And that's really what we're here for. We are here to give our sparks of light. We are here to give our sparks of God. We are here to give of God, of light, of love. That's who we are. That's what we're here for. That's what Debbie's vision is, to heal people. That's mm -hmm. really what our mission is, is to give the God source, the God light, the God sparks that we are. Yes. Now, Phil has a whole God consciousness that he sends out for his brain, but we all have different ways of sending out our God light and love. And Jesus says, you know, it's not like you have, this isn't the first time you've done this. This, you have done this every lifetime you've been there, which is why he still is with you because he believes, okay, I got to repeat it. He believes in what you're doing. That's what he says. Wow. Well, tell him I said, thank you. <laughs> and I believe in him. <laughs> he says he knows. <laughs> He's like, he knows. Okay, you got anything else? Hold on. Okay. I'll repeat it. Um, okay, give me clarification on how to say it. Okay. Um, what he's showing me is um, he is behind you and Mary Magdalene is behind Jasmine and they're behind you, okay? And they're holding hands and then they have their hands on your shoulder and they say, okay, clarify please. As you have been witness to our marriage of life, love, teaching, and helping others, so we have joined with you in your mission of life, love, helping of others. And as a couple, may our life join with your light, may our heart join with your hearts so that you will know that you are supported in your mission so when you feel momentarily that you are alone or there is no one to assist you that you just take a breath and in that stillness of the god in the stillness of your heart you can feel our presence and you can recognize the love that we carry for you and our presence and support that stands behind you. And all you need to do, if you ever 
act out that we have been, is take that moment of silence and feel our presence, feel our love, feel our support. And he's saying they are high heart. He's saying high heart. They are in your high heart. So if you would like, take your right hand and go in the high heart. And he goes, my hand's getting really hot. And he goes, they live in your high heart. In your hands, my hand's heating up right now. Wow. So that's another way you can connect with them is put your hand on your right hand on your high heart and feel yes. the heat, feel the presence. Yes. Okay. Wow. Wow, my hand's getting really hot. Okay, as long as you hear Jesus, can you fix my back? <laughs> <laughs> and he says you can do that. You know, there is no reason that you cannot ask for help through Jesus, through the angelics, through your guide, your teachers. It's when you ask that they can help. So yes. put it out there, put the request out there so that they can step in because they yes. cannot step in unless you physically ask or mentally ask or emotionally. Absolutely. I'm just going to leave my hand there for a while. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any any other questions while they're all here? No, thank you so much. He's sending you. Okay, clarify, please. Okay, he's sending both to you something because I'm seeing two different items. Okay, give me a time on that please okay in the next 72 hours you will both be given a sign or something that will clearly signify to you that they are in your life but whenever they want a sign you have to say give me a mom give me an earthly time so they said in the next 72 hours you will get a sign both of you separately that they are in your life that they are working in your life so wow. 72 hours that's beautiful and now all of us can ask for, for signs in the next 72 hours of we you know whether where we want to go or if we're on the right path or expansion so in that sense that that's out there you can all put your request in there quietly for you know a sign of your path or something because signs are just out there that's beautiful yes Okay, who who does who know who was a past in Egypt with a really big bird? There's a really big Egyptian bird right over here. Does anybody have a connection with Egypt and a big bird? There's an um, Egyptian huge bird right here. When I was when I was small, I used to have a vision of this big, huge winged bird flying over my grandparents' house, and I would wonder why nobody else could see this. And I was okay. Like, oh. It's an Egyptian really big bird. Mm -hmm. I have a big bird and a lion. Okay, well, they said uh, the big bird has been in your life and is standing right here. It's really big um, because it has literally been sent to watch over you. So when you saw it, nobody else did, it was watching you, it was checking on you, it was making sure you're okay. It was observing you. It was an observer. And, a, and there, now the lion. Jehovah. Why is the line connecting to Jehovah? The line is connected to Jehovah. I don't know why. The line's like, my name is Jehovah. And I'm like... Mm -hmm. I have this uh, line right here <laughs> of the tribe of Judah. Okay. Because <laughs> the birds... Well, I see the lion, but also the bird says it never went away. You just don't see it, but it's still watching it. Yeah, I feel both of their presence. It's really big. It's still there. You, you may not see it, but it's still there. Okay, let me ask you what's up to you. Hold on. Okay, it says it can do dreams, but it, it's, you're not in a space where it can physically appear, but it can appear in your dreams, but it physically can't come because it's not in the same linear space that you're in, but it can come in a dream state. Mm, okay. 
I don't know why. Are you not in the same physical linear space as your grandpa's farm? Because it says you're not in the same linear space. I'm, I'm in a different area because uh, that place was in, um, in Mississippi. And then, of course, I'm in Arizona now. Okay. Oh, okay. Because it says that it's not in the same physical linear reality that you were in. Mm -hmm. But it can still come within dream state and betwixt and between. So if I raise my vibration, will that help connect it? It says if you want to connect with it. Okay, well, how do I say that? Um, it is not, it can't come in a physical dimensionality. It will come in a spiritual light form. So it will come to you, but in a different form, but you will still see it. But because it, for some reason, it says it can't come in the same physicality as it did when you were younger, but it mm -hmm. still can connect with you. Mm -hmm. And if, for some reason, that's really important. Well, the physical time space linear is when you're little as where you are now. So it can connect, make a connection with you now. It will just be in a different physical form. I mean, it'll still be a bird. Mm -hmm and everything but it will be different because of where you are now this right. says yeah it can do that but it will be different no. yeah it can do that it doesn't have a problem doing that i'm, I'm trying i'm trying to tune in on its energy because it's um it's very egyptian oh For some reason, it's calling itself a scribe. Mm. You now, a writer. I don't know why. Maybe you can have that conversation with it. But it I says, oh, help me. okay, I'll tell him that. That'll be easy. Um, it says the automatic writing. That's why it said scribe. Give me a name. So we're having to call you so it doesn't get a different being. Give me a name. Okay, he says that start with a uh, bird of Egypt. So when you first begin your automatic writing, put bird of Egypt and then just start writing. It doesn't have to be connected. Say, I wonder did the connection. And then just let your imagination go and it will come in. But you have to start writing. But whenever you start writing, you always have to address the entity or the spirit that you're writing to. So start with bird of Egypt or spirit bird of Egypt or something that is to that spirit and that spirit mm -hmm. only because you don't want to talk to anything else so okay. you put that in there and then just start writing saying i want to connect to you and just like i used to do that with archangel michael i would put his name and i would start writing and eventually my writing would change but it's something that you have to he's saying it to practice at the same time so that he knows when to tune into you Okay. So you can't just do it at any time. It always has to be the same time. It doesn't have to be every day. Be the same time so he knows no when to drop in and when to be with you. That's the only gotcha. condition. Is that you write to him and mm -hmm. it's always the same time. It doesn't have to be every day, but always the same time. Always the same time. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't have a problem. But yeah, I guess he says since he was a scribe, that's how he wants you to connect with him. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He's cool with that. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Just take your time with that because it, he's saying that even though he's very fluent, it will take just a little bit for you to connect with him. So, you know, it may take a couple of times of just writing, but he will be there. And it's just like, you guys got to connect. And then every time you sit down, he'll be there. So I so said, just give, be patient and just give him a couple of times. Okay. Wow. But yeah. Yep. That's and you can do that with a lion too. You can also do that with a lion. But I really? would do the bird first. Do the bird Ooh. first and then connect with the lion. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Wow. This is so informational. I, I, I blew my mind with that. Wow. Bill, you got any information, Mr. Light Beam? Bill? Mm -hmm. You got anything to add? I was just going to say when he does the scribing, 
create the name. So you can create the name from scribing. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'm writing it down too. Bird of Egypt. Got it. And then create the name. So your first uh, name will be what what you would call him. Gotcha. Good. Absolutely. Thank you for that. (laughs) Yeah. Gabby, you got anything to add? Gabby. No. I was just. (laughs) I was just trying to bring in see if I had anybody coming in either. But we have um, Mary Magdalene and Jesus behind us too. Oh they're yeah. Really, they're really um well, Rick sees them, so we wake up and they're next to our bed. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see that too. Well, so yeah, just incorporate them in your life. Yeah. Hello. What? I channeled Fanuel uh, a couple of weeks ago. Are we in a chaotic emotional chaos in the next six or seven weeks? That's what I was. He's told me. I agree. Yeah. So it's going to be enlightening. <laughs> well, that's why he's here. <laughs> Wow. All right, it's good. It's it's all for the better. Yeah. yeah. And as long as everybody uses the tools that we have, we'll all be fine. It's just right. using the tools that you have. Yeah. 